thank you so much for staying with us. Now, the Kenyan government has announced that curfew breakers will no longer be taken to the existing isolation centers, as has been the case. Now, instead, they will be held in a yet-to-be-named curfew breakers holding space. Health CAS Dr. Rashid Aman says the holding space will be set up with respect to guidelines on social distancing. The National Emergency Response Committee has since directed the Inspector General of police to designate the holding space as soon as possible. Previously, Kenyans arrested past curfew hours were being taken to the government isolation centers for 14 days on assumption that they had contracted the COVID-19. They would then undergo a mandatory testing and then get released based on the results of the test. Let's now speak with George Msamali, who is a security analyst on this. He's joining us via way of phone. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much for taking your time and joining us on news this, this afternoon. Talk to us about this issue. Does it even have a legal backing? And if not, what should happen when one is, you know, arrested? What should be the next step, sir? Uh, from my point of view, is that uh, this is going to be illegal action because the police work within the premises of the law and due process has to be followed. Police are only allowed to hold a suspect for not more than 24 hours before taking the suspect to court. And in this case, we are talking about arresting people that have breached the curfew order. And this in itself is illegal. So it means the police have to take this person before the court and the court will determine what action are supposed to be taken. So this order uh, that has been given is actually illegal and it's putting the police in a conflicting situation with the judiciary. So any person that will be arrested under these circumstances and put under this confinement will be illegally held. So we are talking about detention without trial. This is very illegal. Okay, so if the government insists on, you know, setting up this curfew breakers holding space, what, is, what would be the procedure of making it legal? It has to be dealt with as a medical emergency. Because if... Uh, we have to make it legal, then the government needs to declare a state of emergency. And when we declare a state of emergency, it means that the constitution is suspended. And this is exactly what happened uh, in 1956 during the Mau Mau rebellion, when a state of emergency was declared and people were arrested by the police and put in detention. So if we have to do it now, then the president, who is the commander in chief, has to declare a state of emergency and it will give police powers to arrest and detain people without taking them to court without following due process. And I think that is not the direction we want to take. So basically, we are facing an, a, a, a health emergency. Let's deal with this as a health emergency. There are other better ways of dealing with this as opposed to now forcing people uh, into quarantine for the purpose of enforcing the curfew. Okay, so for now we are here. The CAS announced that yesterday and you and I, sir, can bet that today, for instance, there are people who will be arrested having, you know, uh, been caught, being outside past the curfew hours. So what should be done because we are now here, sir? Uh, I think basically the police should do the right thing. Let them follow due process. They arrest a person who has breached the law. Let them take them to court. If the courts are opening, let them take a plea and let the court decide what is supposed to be done to these people. And if there is any other alternative, then we should look at this as a medical emergency. Let's not use the police, but let's use the medical teams in enforcing that, making sure that this curfew is obeyed by all citizens. And this can only be done by sensitization, not criminalizing the whole thing, because that is where the problem is, because Kenyans seem, seem not to understand what they're supposed to do and why. I think this is where now we are failing. We must sensitize the people. We must do civic education telling people what we are facing and the dangers of them exposing themselves. But when we try to use the police, the gun and the button, then we are going to fail and fail miserably. Indeed, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. That was uh, George Msamali, who is a security analyst.